I remember once writing an article about finding a clematis to flower for every single month of the year. And that for me is the marvelous, miraculous thing about the clematis family is that there genuinely are different varieties that will flower from January until December. Not one all the way through, but if you have a succession, you really can do that. But I'm standing here in July and the other thing that's remarkable about them as a family is that you just have such a range of beautiful, velvety, delicious, rich and wonderful coloured climbers in one family for any particular time of year. And I'm going to show you my six favourites for right now in July. The first is Madame Julia Corovor. This is one of the biggest ones that we grow here. Lovely magenta flowers, rumps up um, to about three metres. We have it climbing over a metal frame to give height in the Oast Garden. And this is exactly the right colour for the Oast Garden, which is really intense and saturated. And also texture is important in there and it's nice and velvety. Not though as velvety as this one which is called Royal Velour, and it really is velour. It's like the most velvety, luscious, dark, rich crimson, like a sort of cardinal's cape. We have that dressing up a shrub that flowers in spring, which is Viburnum opulus sterile, the Gelder Rose, which flowers April into May. And then this flowers from June until often September. Not quite as prolific as Julia Corovon, but maybe a little bit longer used in a similar way is étoile violette and that's this one which means star violet and you can see why and it's incredibly floriferous the longest flowering of these types that we grow here and just simply beautiful we have it growing up through a rose called cerise bouquet bright pink with this lovely deep purple growing through it so then on to the sort of true summer flowers with slightly bigger flowers. This is Prince Charles. This was one of Christopher Lloyd's favourite clematis. And I remember seeing this at Great Dixter and being blown away by it, growing right up into a tree. And we have this again through a black elder to dress it up for a longer season. And I love its big, you know, really quite showy flowers. So almost like pearl d'azur, but even longer flowering. And um, it, it's just, it's a really, I mean, it's a really, really good garden clematis. I, I'd be sad without that one. So that's a cracker. And it's, it's this lovely sort of uh, lavendery, mauvey purple, which is really nice and bluey too. The final two I use a lot for picking. And this is bread uh, from the Durandii clematis. And you can tell that because it has no tendrils. So that's what makes it so brilliant for picking because the thing about picking the ones with tendrils is that they're always tied so firmly into their bush or tree or climbing frame. Whereas this one, we have it growing on a metal um, a sort of fence all the way down in the cutting garden. And this is actually the Boulevard series that's been bred from Durandii uh, that flowers for much longer. Um, and it's, it's just an absolute beauty. And if you sear the stamens in boiling water, for 20 seconds, it lasts for a week in the vase. And then the final one, which without doubt is the longest flowering in the garden here that flowers often here from May until November or December. And this is Bill Mackenzie. It reminds me of lemons hanging on a tree. And um, Vita Sattva West wrote beautifully about it because she also said the seed pods were so good, which they are, because they look like really fluffy little Irish terriers. <laughs> And um, it always makes me laugh whenever I see them. And these are brilliant and you can actually dry them um, and they hold on to their fluff if you put them in a little drop of glycerine in the bottom of a milk bottle, just let the water evaporate over a couple of weeks and then it holds them without them getting brittle. With any clematis, if you see them in nature, they grow in dappled shade. And if you don't have a shady spot, then that doesn't matter just lean a tile or some sort of, you know, a little bit of wood or whatever over their roots. So the roots are shady, but they can climb up into the sun 
and just make the whole garden look completely spectacular with their starry flowers. I love them. So just look at that mass of loveliness for July. Kind of what could be nicer, really. <laughs>